giving tradies and contractors around the globe the tools to run a modern business. You're listening to Toolbox Talks from the Site Shed. Now here's your host, Matt Jones. Welcome to Toolbox Talks. This is part three of a series where I'm joined by Matt Jones from Cube Consulting. So in the last couple of episodes, we have been talking about various business topics. The first one was business mindset. That was an interesting podcast there, which I learned a lot from. And I encourage you to go back and listen to that. Uh, It's available on iTunes and also be a link in the show notes to that uh, episode. The next episode was pricing for profit, which again was uh, very interesting. And that's a Uh, a pretty hot topic and something that we see a lot of people not doing correctly in the marketplace. So again, go back and listen to that episode. And then they both tie into this final episode here where we're going to be talking about brand planning. Now, um, this is also a very hot topic. And um, I'd just like to welcome back to the microphone, Matt from Cube Consulting. Cheers, Matt. Thank you. How are you, mate? Very good. Very good. Looking forward to 2016. Heck. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, it's full steam ahead, isn't it? Yep, definitely doesn't stop, does it? So brand planning is what we're talking about today. Why have you Why have you decided to uh, choose brand planning as the third and final episode in this series? Well, one of the, the key things about brand and brand planning and from our you know, experience and, and seeing you know, really successful business owners being successful is that you know, following up from having that, that mindset and being open-minded about you know, what return on investment they need as a business owner then that ties into the numbers. You know, what do they need to charge out? What they need to deliver from a, um, a value point of view? That then rolls into okay, where does their brand need to sit? Because ultimately, if someone's going to be charging $100 an hour as opposed to $50 an hour, they need to make sure that their brand communicates that hey, they are premium priced. There is more value to be had. You know, choosing that service, the $100 service over the $50 service. So a lot of people, unfortunately, they're trying. They're always competing on price. They just can't understand why they, you know, they can't get more dollars or you know, charge more. Is because their brand does not communicate any different. No, nothing different from the competitors. So does what you've, I suppose, coined as brand planning tie into what we might be familiar with as branding? Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of people uh, with branding, branding sort of. Conjures up a thing or a thought of okay, colors, logos, you know, shirts, vehicles, and even, yeah. you know, so that's branding. A lot of people think about branding, whereas brand planning, the essence of that is where do you want your brand to be positioned in the eye of your ideal client? In other words, that client that's willing to pay that hundred dollars, that client that you know what, there's a hundred thousand people out there, but our ideal client is only. You know, a thousand of them are there, thousand of them that we want to be talking to. Yeah. So with brand planning means all about positioning and all about making sure that we are relevant to our ideal client. We don't want to be, we don't want to speak to everyone. You know, we just want to believe, you know, we want to talk to those clients that believe what we believe, which depending on what you, you know, what you're delivering as a brand, whether it be value, whether it be service, whether it be emergency response, whether it be transparency, whether it be job reports, whatever it is, you've just got to make sure that you're relevant. And this is where brand planning comes in too. And again, brand planning very much, it ties into your financials. Right. Whereas branding, again, it's just that isolated because once you get the brand planning where you need to be positioned, then then you can sort of go into what we recommend, what we do with our clients, then you go into branding. Yeah, and I would agree with that as well. Like we, that's one of the things that we do, especially if we're doing like, you know, logo designs or things like that. We always try and ascertain who that customer's ideal client is because, if, you know, if you've got a, Let's let's use this as an as an example. Say you're a builder, and a lot of the the work that you want to be the work that you specialize in or you do is like you know new modern chic homes. Then that branding is going to be a lot different to a builder that specializes in traditional style constructions. Correct. It's the whole thing. You know, like if you, if you're a volume based builder as opposed to architectural design builder, your brand's totally different. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a you've got different clientele. Your clients have got totally different needs uh, different solutions and you need to communicate it, communicate that effectively. Well, I'm glad you said that. That means we're doing something right. <laughs> yeah, 100%. 100%. Like, and look, and as you know, like, and this is the thing where a lot of people just get it wrong is, again, they try to be all things to all people. They're not really sure what they're about. And ultimately, this is the key thing. Again, looking forward, it's about where do you want your brand to be positioned in three, five years? Because ultimately, what we're about is we want to build brands that become the experts or the known experts in their specific 
you know, chosen fields. And ultimately, by building that consistently over a period of time, then you will get quality leads coming through. You won't have to be competing against everyone because you've got the credibility there. So threefold was we're getting good leads coming through. Cost of conversion is minimal and our conversion rates are going up because we're not competing against everyone because we're in that niche where our brand is set apart from everyone else. Yep. So um, with what you do day to day, I mean, what are some of the common signs that you see of a company that has poor brand planning? Uh, I'm guessing <laughs> I'm guessing the majority do. The common things is that, you know, with poor brand planning is with a lot of them is that they're it's, it's a common thing is what they're, they're working hard. They're still competing on price. They're having to sort of go mainstream. So their they're quotes, when they're quoting, they're, they're quoting against, they're coming against a lot of competition. Mm-hmm. So in other words, their brand is not sitting out. Their team members, like their, you know, their tradesmen, their apprentices don't really know what the brand stands for. You know, they're, they're, the brands, they've got no real vision or purpose of why we're doing it today. So we're very big on from a brand planning point of view is that we're not only talking about brand planning, how we communicate with clients, but also how we communicate with our staff, how we communicate with potential partners, because we want to be very confident that this is what we stand for. We provide great service. This is the type of client we deliver, and this is our guarantee. We want to be the experts in this region, this geographical area, whatever it is, and everyone's on board with that. So are there are there sort of uh, like metrics or you know key areas that you coach your clients in 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 like which you know where what they should be what that brand planning um, facet actually includes you know like what are the what are the key areas that they need to focus on Yeah, so we, we've got again a structure and a system where we take our client journey, we take our clients through, and yeah. it's one of those things that we often find it takes three, four, or five times. Because when we go through this, again, most people have been in the mindset to really think about it. So they, they go quite superficial and just general sort of stuff. But when we really go deep and we try to get them to dig deep about their brand, about who they are, about who their ideal clients are, about what clients feel about them when they leave, about what is their values, you know, what is really important to that business that everyone is associated with, that this is what we what we call, this is the way it's done here every day, non-negotiable. Um, you know, what are some of our guarantees that we could be putting out there? And Ultimately, this wraps up what we call our USP or our unique selling proposition is that you, as a business owner, you want to be able to be very clearly when someone says, well, why are you charging 100? Someone else is charging 50. You just go, bang. Yeah. And very confidently, if they say, well, I don't agree with that, they go, no problem. Good luck. See you next time. Don't, you know, don't take it. Don't take offense to it. They just don't believe what you believe and you, yeah. you move on. Yeah. So. But yeah, it's it's a very methodical process. Like everything that we do, it, it just takes time to get. You've got to dig. You've got to dig deep, and you've got to you've got to get people on board with the journey. As a business owner, what we especially with tradies, a lot of them just take it all on themselves. Yeah. Whereas you know we want to open it up to their business partners. We've got to open it up to their team. Yeah. You know, get them involved in this as well, like because they're the ones that are stepping up every day and representing that brand. They need to yeah, know. Okay. They need to know why they have to make sure that they take their shoes off every all the time. Why they need to make sure their truck is always tidy. Why they need to make sure that their job shoot is completed at the end of the day. Why they need to make sure their time sheet's done. Why they need to make sure that if they're going to be five minutes late, they're going to call at least twenty minutes in advance of when they're going to be late. Tell Mrs. Jones, excuse me, I'm going to be late. So just get everyone buying into the same methodology. Hundred percent. Because then, is that a hard thing to implement? I mean, I say hard. I suppose. I mean, nothing's easy. Anything that's worth doing, anything's uh, not easy, I suppose. But I mean, is it a like that transition? Do you get a lot of pushback, like a, res- a lot of resistance to change? Not with it. With people who come on board with us, no, because they're already ready and they're in the process. And they're in the mindset of, then they can see, you know, they're already, yeah, they're qualified. They're, they're yeah. on the journey. You know, they're already coming through and they see the bigger picture. From from an implementation point of view, though, I mean, say you know, like you're trying to get all your, you know, if you're trying to get all of your staff on board with the same methodology, do you get people that are resistant resistant to change in that environment? Yeah, well, some people when we when we do the rollout there, yeah, like in the staff environment, there are some people there that don't believe and they need to move on. So yeah, because if you've been operating for five years or ten years, and all of a sudden you're sort of coming in with a bit of a new, you know, you you need to take the business in a different direction. There are some people that will push back and. And it's like, okay, cool, no worries, I understand, you know, this is not for you, no problem. Well, maybe need to part ways and move on. But it's very clear that what, as a business owner, you're going to be communicating that as a brand, we're investing in the brand, we're going to invest in systems, we're going to invest in, in tools and things that will make your life easier. We're going to make sure that, you know what, as a business owner, I don't need to micromanage you. You are, again, you're accountable for your own 
domain of what you're working on and you're, you're accountable to the brand and what we deliver to the client because ultimately this is a key thing as a business owner. If I'm going to be saying, I'm charging double everyone else because I've got the best team, we are in and out guaranteed. Yeah. Now, if I'm selling that, obviously, and educating the client on that, then we've got to make sure that our team's going to deliver that. So our team needs to buy in to the brand. This is where a lot of businesses fail because there's that disconnect between what the brand looks like, nice and fluffy and you know, nice colors and nice fancy corporate wording that means nothing. The guys on the ground have got no idea about this and how that links it all to their day-to-day. Yeah. Matt, what would my business look like before I implemented brand planning and then what might it look like after I implemented a brand planning strategy? So part of the brand planning strategy, and it's more than a strategy, it is a, it's an ongoing process. And again, it's an ongoing methodology of, of how the business owner needs to operate their business. But look, the feedback and the results we get from our clients is that we now have a business owner that's very clear and confident about their brand, about what they want from their brand. They now have a team that whether that team you know, is going to Reese and going to their suppliers, that each of the team members are on board and the way that they act and the way that they need to understand what the brand means. So the key things is that you've got a team there that's totally uh, engaged and accountable delivering on that brand. So, And what that does then that rolls into delivery and quality of delivery of service and consistency of service. So from a, you know, taking it small, just developing it from a business point of view and getting everyone in, the, in their team engaged, that then flows through to better quality, consistent quality, which then creates, you know, ongoing referrals and, um, and repeat business. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. So is there anything you think we've missed there? No, look, I think, and, and like it's part of you know, episode one, episode two, it's all about making sure, you know, in five years' time, we're going to be working hard. We want to build a sustainable brand. We want something that's around, you know, for 15 years. Do you want to hand this down to your children? Do you want to, you know, sell it one day? Or do you just want to close it down? And this is one thing we see a lot, which is really depressing, where business owners have been operating for, you know, 15, 20, 30 years comes time to retirement, they haven't put any superannuation away, their brand is worthless and they've just got to shut their business down and they're not sure what they're going to do for retirement age because their body's broken and they can't keep working on the tools. Mm-hmm. So in other words, what do you want your brand to be? Where do you want to be positioned long term? Yep. Yeah, okay. And I'd say, I suppose some takeaways for me in this episode are, you know, under position, uh, understand where you want your brand to be positioned in the eye of your ideal client. So Correct. I suppose that ties into... You, know, you can't be everything to everyone. What's that saying? If you try to be everything to everyone, you'll end up being nothing to anyone. Correct. And then um, I suppose in, in be willing to invest in the systems and tools and training and you know communication and you know all that kind of stuff that can help you uh, convey your message both internally and externally and have your have your team buy into that uh, that mantra and that that brand mindset. You've definitely got to invest in your team to get them on board with the brand and give them the ownership. You know, empower them. To, to take ownership of that brand so that they've got input. Yep. Because they're ultimately, they're ultimately uh, the business owner's number one asset in terms of delivering on that brand because they're the ones that need to deliver consistently. Yeah, okay, great. Well, look, mate, I think that pretty much wraps up that episode unless you had any, anything else you wanted to, to um, add to uh, brand planning. The only thing I'd say is just get excited about your brand. Yep. Because if you're not excited about your brand, no one else will be excited about your brand. Yep. No, that's, a good, that's a good closing comment, I would say. <laughs> yeah. All right, Matt. Well, look, that's great. Thanks very much. Uh, that pretty much wrap, wraps up this series. So um, that was uh, three episodes there. We spoke about business mindset in the first one, pricing for profit in the second one, and just now we've uh, wrapped up with brand planning. Um, they, they were fantastic. Thanks very much for your expertise and your input in those fields. Uh, cheers, Matt, and hopefully uh, yeah, your audience gets uh, a bit out of it. Oh, mate, for sure they will. And um, where, so where can, the, uh, where can the listeners get a hold of you? So you can go to our website, Cube Consulting Group, which is www.cubeconsultinggroup.com.au. And, uh, yeah, just go in there and contact us. Okay, cool. And you guys are Cube Consulting Group across pretty much all social media as well, aren't you? Yeah, sure. We've got Facebook, Cube Consulting Group uh, Facebook page. Yep. So jump on there. Okay, cool. And um, for the listeners out there as well, Matt is um, going to be available through the Site Shared closed Facebook group. So if you're a member of that, um, you'll be able to access Matt through that as well for his um, expertise and advice. And okay, so that's a wrap for this uh, series. Thanks very much, Matt, once again for being part of it. And um, we would definitely be working uh, together more throughout the year and in events to come. So um, mate, we look forward to working with that front. And uh, yeah, that's a wrap. 
Cheers. Thanks for that, Matt. So if you haven't already, head across to the siteshed.com and register for our Toolbox Talks where you'll be regularly sent great episodes just like this straight to your inbox so you'll never miss one. Uh, if you want to join the community, you can head across to the siteshed.com forward slash members where for a small monthly fee, you'll get access to regularly updated training material as well as access to our forum where you can mingle and collaborate with trade-based business owners just like you from all over the world. If you're enjoying this podcast, please head across to iTunes and leave us a five-star review. We greatly appreciate it, and it helps us spread the word and reach the masses. Likewise, if you know anyone that might benefit from the content we create, then please go ahead and share this with them. You've been listening to Toolbox Talks by The Site Shed. For more great content just like this, head across to thesiteshed.com and join the amazing community of savvy trade-based business owners. 